this video, we're going to go over getting started with ASD in LiveAmp. This will be a very brief introduction to using LiveAmp to create sounds that can be used for engine sound enhancement or AVAS, acoustic vehicle alerting system. We can also use LiveAmp to tune engine order reduction, but we'll save that for a separate video. In the final stages of tuning a production system, we would connect LiveAmp to the vehicle head unit and listen to the sounds we've created through the vehicle's sound system, ideally while getting real-time parameter data from the CAN bus. However, much of the initial sound design work can be done from the bench using just LiveAmp on Windows PC and a set of computer speakers or headphones plugged into the sound card. And we can do this by using a feature called ASD Desktop Auditioning. So we click on the ASD Desktop Auditioning tab and start a new project. You should end up on the ASD tab. If not, just click up here in the toolbar and let's go to Library Setup. So here we have all of the configuration parameters that we would need to adjust before we really get into building our sound design project. Only a few switches here in ASD. Engine order reduction is disabled by default when using the desktop auditioner. Sound generation is a switch that is used to globally enable or disable all sound synthesis in ASD. And the diagnostic switch can be turned on if a click track is needed to determine secondary path latencies or diagnose routing issues in the audio system, but not needed right now. I'm not gonna to change too many things, just gonna take a look at sample rate here. Sample rate, this is the external sample rate. This is what the target sound card or host application is running at. And the internal sample rate is what the ASD library itself is doing its internal processing and synthesis at. We're gonna change both of these to 48 kilohertz, uh, just for the highest quality possible. And when we change them, you can see that these red boxes uh, get drawn around the controls. That just signifies that a change has been made that requires the library be restarted and reinitialized before the change takes hold. So let's do that now. We'll click reinitialize. And when we come back, you see the boxes are gone. That means that these values have taken hold. Okay, let's move over to vehicle inputs. This is where we determine which vehicle input parameters we want to use to control our ASD sound modules. A vehicle input parameter can be any control data that the vehicle provides to ASD, including RPM, vehicle speed, engine torque, or even seat sensor information. All we need to do is create a base and then match the unique identifier number, and we will have access to the data. For ASD, it's a requirement that we have a base we defined as the primary RPM. So if I click on this default base that was added to our project, you can see that this one is already assigned as the default primary RPM, so that's great. Let's just edit it and give it a textual description so we know that that's our RPM. If you look over here at the unique identifier, it's hex value zero C. That is set by default simply because the OBD2 standard parameter ID for RPM is, is that. Now, the important thing is that unique identifier number has to match the data stream of RPM coming from the vehicle in order for ASD to know what to do with it. So in the case where we're using the ASD desktop auditioner like we are right now, it actually doesn't really matter what this unique identifier is, but when it goes into the vehicle, that one has to match up. Minimum value is zero for RPM and maximum value 10,000. Those seem reasonable for now. Let's save the changes and add one more base. And let's make this base our throttle value. So we'll come in, we'll give it a description, call it throttle. And let's change the unique identifier to hex value 11, just because that's the, the OBD2 default value for throttle. But again, in this case, we're using the, the desktop auditioner. It doesn't actually matter. When it comes time to go into the car, that's when this one has to match. And minimum value, uh, zero to 100. Uh, typically, that, that we get throttle values of zero to 100%. So that's a good place to start for that one. You can see that the default primary RPM is not checked. That's great. We only want one of our bases to be the default and that one's already set. So let's go save changes. You'll see that there's the red box again here around the, the whole area. 
Um, and also up here it tells us explicitly requires reinit. So that's what we're gonna do. We've made some changes that require a reinitialization. Let's click the reinitialization button and the red boxes go away. We see valid, that's great. Now we can move on to uh, setting our ASD modules. So probably the first thing we want to do is just grab an output module and put it down here on the graph. You can see that we have uh, only one output channel, channel zero. Now that's because in our library setup tab, we have control output channels as one. Now, if we wanted the stereo project, we could set this to two or we could do multi-channel, but for now, let's just set it to one and keep it simple. So let's take a mixer um, and drop it down in front of the output. A mixer is going to be helpful because all of our audio sources and other modules that we put down, we only have one output in this session. So by adding a mixer, we can um, put all of these audio sources into the mixer and then take the output of the mixer and pipe it to the output channel. So we just grab, uh, we click on this little diamond here, left click and drag across and we connect it to the output. Next, let's grab an audio source, something simple, a tone generator, drag that down, and let's go from the output of the tone generator to the first channel on the mixer, and it requires reinitialization. We've added these, these new modules, so let's hit reinitialize. And now we should have a fixed sine tone playing, but we can't hear it yet because we are not listening to anything. So let's go to the listening tab here and we'll right click and select ASD speaker out. Now at that point, you should be able to hear the playback. If you don't hear playback at that point on your, on your PC, your headphones or your speakers, click on this little icon here and it will give you the list of available output devices to listen on, but that one should be working for me. So now it's just a steady tone. Uh, if we go into our, our tone generator, we can see it's a sine wave, it's a fixed frequency. We can adjust this and listen to different frequencies of, of sine wave, but this is probably not the most useful thing for us right now um, because it's just a fixed and non-moving sine tone. So maybe the thing to do is to change the fixed frequency to adaptive frequency. And if we, we do that, then you can see we get this graph here where on the x-axis we have the minimum to maximum values of the RPM. Now we can pick our VIN to control this, our vehicle input, and we want it to be RPM. If we do throttle, you can see that the x-axis goes to the throttle min and max, which is zero to 100, but let's keep it on RPM. And if I drag this one down, I can start at 20 Hertz and we can go as high up as just about 24K. We're at, we're at 48K, so uh, half of that we is our, our maximum and our y-axis. Now, if we go over to our RPM input parameter here and we grab this little slider, we should be able to hear the sine wave follow the frequency, the RPM, in this linear fashion that we've defined here. Now you can, it might sound a little bit um, stuttery as we move across. And if that's the case, you can go to temporal smoothing and you can set uh, temporal smoothing up. This is probably high, but let's just listen to it anyways. And you can see it has a smoothing effect So let's set this back down to maybe 200. If we wanna add nodes to this to make the, the curve a little less linear, we can do that. If we wanna set the highest bound to be not quite at the, the boundaries of our frequency, we can do that too. And then you can see how it tracks. So, if we wanted to add another noise generator, just uh, another um, simple audio source, we could add a noise generator. Let's make this brown noise. 
and let's go into our mixer and we need to reinitialize so we reinitialize and now we actually have brown noise playback as well now there isn't really much you can choose in here just the different types of noise so if we want to have some kind of dynamic playback with the noise generator one thing we can do is we can add sorry a filter and let's add a bandpass filter now we can take this line that we've drawn here and just hit the delete key and then draw the line from brown noise into our bandpass filter draw the output of that into the mixer and then we can open this up oh let's reinitialize so that it actually works okay so now we have a bandpass filter playing our noise and if we move this down we should be able to hear how it affects the actual noise now this is a fixed frequency bandpass filter right now we have um, cutoff and and Q but we can also make this one an adaptive frequency as well and if we draw a curve much like the one that we did for our sine wave um, you can see when I move the RPM up now then the filter that we've added changes its frequency based on RPM but you can also choose throttle if you want to have a different vehicle input parameter control the noise playback and the filter so if that's the case now our throttle parameter is going to be controlling so we have one vehicle input parameter for our sine wave and then another one for our throttle so that's a pretty simple getting started explanation there's obviously a lot more you can do here and we'll go into that further in videos to come